I'm Lynette Carty. Happy New Year to everyone. I'm so glad to be back with you this year and I'm hoping that all of you are able to keep your New Year's resolutions. I'm going to try. I've hit the gym a few times. I just got to keep it up, keep it up or else you'll see me holding my breath on air. <laughs> now before I introduce the guest today, have I got a fantabulous show for you. Let's take a look at this video clip. What has lasted 5,000 years was once almost lost. Now, the world awaits. The divine cultures return. Shen Yun. Welcome back to the show. Join me today just saw the fabulous Shen Yun. Here with me, William Cho, who is president of the Connecticut Chinese Cultural Association. And next to him is the very beautiful Tracy Ju, who is president of the Connecticut Fang Dafa Association. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, William, please tell our viewers a little bit about what happens, first of all, at the Connecticut Chinese Cultural Association. Yeah, the organization really with the objective is to promote the authentic Chinese culture to the Connecticut. Uh, we run different workshops in the community center, libraries, and also, uh, and also Lions Clubs, and, um, and also a Rotary Club as well. So we also organize different events, so just help the general public get to appreciate about the diversity of the culture. Yes, and it's very diverse culture. We're going to talk a little bit about that further in the show. And Tracy, Fang Dafa Association. Okay, Falun Dafai is a meditation exercise for body, mind, and spirit, and we offer free teaching of the exercise to the public. And uh, this year, uh, Connecticut Falun Dafai Association is a presenter of Shen Yun Performing Arts. Oh, it's coming wow. to Connecticut. All right, so I love the collaboration, first of all. Different organizations get together to bring this fabulous show here to Connecticut. So let's talk a little bit about Shen Yun. Yeah, Shen Yun is uh, founded in 2006 um, with the objective is try to help to revive the true essence of 5,000 years civilization. Uh, so it's a wonderful objective that mm -hmm. both organizations we share with and we're proud to bring them to Connecticut here. Um, as you're aware of uh, in China, with 5,000 years, people are very spiritual. They believe in Buddhism, Taoism, Confucianism, just name a few. But sadly, in the last 60 plus years since the communism took over, many of those authentic cultures were destroyed. Uh, but the core spiritual value perceived are uh, still retained in people's mind. And this group of people, it's about 100 when they first started. They all professional dancers and musicians, but they share the same vision. is how do they bring this valuable treasure, national treasure, back to the world. Uh, that's why they started. Uh, when they first started touring around the world in 2007, uh, nowadays, there are three uh, dance troupes, the same size, each of their own uh, live orchestra performing. And uh, so last year alone, they've been to 100 cities, 20 countries around the world. So very proud to bring the Connecticut here. I think it's a fantastic way to preserve your rich culture and history. And so let's talk a little bit more about the dancers, the musicians, the singers, the orchestra. People at home can see uh, pictures of them as we chat. Right. The, a lot of those dancers, they, they won the international uh, Chinese classical dance competitions. Uh, so they're really the talents around the world, uh, many of those are uh, the Chinese descendants, uh, that they share the same objective. 
Uh, in fact, like myself, five years ago, you asked me what ch classical Chinese dance I, I know little about. Mm -hmm. um, but through the performance, I got to really appreciate that uh, so diverse. Uh, also, it's just so comprehensive. Parallel to ballet is one of the most comprehensive dancing system in the world. It's phenomenal. It's, it's phenomenal. And this is coming from a, a ballerina. Uh, it's, it's <laughs> phenomenal, absolutely. So maybe Tracy can also add a little bit more color yeah. about classical Chinese. And tell us dance. about the stories that are told within Shenyang. Well, um, I have learned some uh, Chinese classical dance um, in the United States um, by uh, actually some of the teachers uh, before they formed Shenyun Performing Arts, they offer some teaching. So I actually learned, uh, actually learned a little bit from like, uh, them before, even before Shenyun was formed in 2006. So, um, and so I know like a Chinese classic dance is very, takes a lot of training and the discipline. Um, the dancer have also to be trained in ballet, but they have to um, be very good at uh, at least three major uh, features of Chinese classical dance. One is called the uh, form, that's the movement and the poses of the dance. Um, and another is the technique, that's like martial arts technique, where there's a lot of flip and turns. And uh, another well, one is, yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so acrobats actually came from Chinese classical mm -hmm. dance. Um, and um, there's another very important feature is called the bearing, that's the ability to express the ethnicity of the, um, the story and the inner feelings dancers. So that's why Chinese classical dance can portray like um, different stories and the legends from the history and uh, they can be uh, very different characters. So tell us a little bit about the stories that people will see when they come to the show. Yeah, <clears throat> every year they actually bring in a different program and some of those very popular ones such as um, the journey to the west or we call the monkey king story. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a wonderful story to talk about a monk uh, you know, that travel uh, west to India try to bring back the Buddha scripture. In this long journey, um, he had three disciples protecting him. And the favorite character is the Monkey King, uh, being more rebellious, but at the same time very loyal, uh, pure in his, his heart, always come to rescue at the right moment. Uh, so it's equivalent to like an odyssey in the West where it's a different episode. So in the last few years, the Shen Yun will show just one episode uh, of a story. So every year they bring in another story. So it's fun, very entertaining. Uh, really, it's very enjoyable. You learn about the history, yeah, it's, it's also very enjoyable. Mm -hmm. And Tracy? Yeah, and that, that, that was story. From the, that was from the Tan Dynasty, one mm -hmm. of the more than 50 dynasties throughout Chinese history. Yeah, and, uh, and there's another story you want to mention, Mulan. Mulan, yeah, the other one, uh, about three years ago, they have a performance about Mulan. You may heard about Mulan from the Disney. Mm -hmm. They have yes. an animation. It's a wonderful story. It's told about a young lady. It's over a thousand years ago. It's a real story. In fact, uh, she joined the army and served the army for close to 10 years. Remarkable young lady at that age that, you know, probably rarely venture out doorstep, let alone so brave to fight for the country. Yeah. Uh, it's a happy ending too, so she returned home at the end of the war. It's more about her spirit, you know, making sacrifice for your family, your country, her resilience, her courage, loyalty to the family. So a lot of those common values that we appreciate and, and we treasure. Yeah, it's a beautiful story, absolutely beautiful story. Now let's talk about the costumes. Out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the performance, they think about the group about 100 professional dancers and musicians in together. So of the 50 professional dancers, so with each of the program only lasts about five minutes of show, uh, yet the show is two hours, so you see about 20, 15 to 20 different pieces. Different costume, different backdrop, different music, we'll, we'll touch on some of those later, but the costume, all of those are handcrafted. Uh, take a lot of time to just to design the costume mm -hmm. and hand make those costumes. So you look at the color, it's just marvelous. And uh, it's a lot of designer, fashion design. They love the show, they want to sit in front row seat. Yeah. So they can really enjoy and see and, you know, the, how the, the different costumes come yeah, together. Beautiful. Tracy, you like to add to that about like the costumes? Well, yeah, the costumes, they're either from more than uh, 50 dynasties throughout the history or more than um, actually, 20 different dynasties and more than 50 ethnic regions in China. Yeah, they're um. beautiful, absolutely. So let's talk a little bit now about my favorite thing, uh, which is dancing, back to the dancing, but the choreographer. I'm just imagining 
how this person puts this whole show together or a group of people. Tell us a little bit about the choreography that goes on behind the scenes. Yeah, our understanding is that, yeah, it's a large group of uh, uh, choreographers to work together. Uh, there's so much story to tell with 5,000 year history. So I think one of the hardest part is to first have to choose the story and then how do you compose the story and present it on stage. And that's the beauty of performing art. They're so expressive that we need to do any talking yet you enjoy, appreciate it. Um, they also have to combine with the technology nowadays with this animated digital backdrop. So the backdrop dynamically changing as they dance and also with the live orchestra. So all describing on the stage with a large group dance it takes so much effort for them to put together. So essentially, they spend about three, uh, six months touring around the world. The other six months, they are dedicated to make new programs. Right. So every time you heard about, every year they bring in 100% new program. Yeah, I had an opportunity to speak with Tracy um, before the program, and I was going through some of the previous year's uh, books with the pictures of the costumes and no two were alike. They're very unique, and the stories that were told were very different, and I just, uh, I'm amazed. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. So let's move on to the musicians and the orchestra and the conductor. Tell us a little bit about them. Yeah, that's also very unique. Um, as they continue to grow now, they actually have three dance troops, so they actually have three uh, large orchestra. Um, they spend, I know they spend ten, uh, 10 hours a day practicing. So it's amazing. Many of those, they come from very well-known orchestra um, in previously. And the music, what makes it so unique is a combined, this is really the world's only live orchestra that play both classical Chinese and classical Western instruments. Wow. And it's quite a challenge yeah. because the melody is very different. But when they combine together nicely, it's just a breath of fresh air. It's remarkable music. Um, it, the tone is very different. Uh, it's something you can appreciate diversity again. Uh, one of my favorite Chinese instruments called Erhu is also known as Chinese violin. It's only a two-string instrument, but the sounds of the world, very soulful. Uh, they have, from time to time, their solo instrument performance as well. But the effect of combining the light music uh, with a large group dance and then also animated backdrop and then you mentioned about the costume all bring it together with the story and classical Chinese dance this is a world-class performance it is, it is awesome um, I want to talk a little bit about where the uh, Shen Yun has performed around the world tell us some places where they've been yeah last year alone they've been to 100 cities 20 countries so uh, like in US um, the East Coast they perform in the Lincoln Center in New York City also in the opera, uh, Boston Opera House in Boston. Um, so, and also I know they perform in Philadelphia. I actually grew up in Austin, Texas. Okay. So they have performance in Texas as well. Dallas, Houston, and Austin, Texas. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's just a jam pack in this travel schedule. Um, uh, when we do a promotion, some of the folks say, oh, I'm gonna spend a few months in Florida. In fact, they're gonna perform in Florida in four different cities in the next few months too. So I think if you can go look at the website, you can find out their schedule. Mm -hmm. And if you're friends in different parts of the country, you can also let them know. They it's perform, coming. yeah, in UK, uh, I know in Taiwan, in Korea, Japan, uh, I'm happy friends be in around the, the world. That's great, <laughs> the show is there. So that's fabulous for you viewers over in the UK. That's awesome, that's awesome. So where is the show going to be here in Connecticut and when? And uh, give us all the details about that. Absolutely. Um, this is the second time they're coming to the, will be the second time, coming to the Palace Theatre. Mm -hmm. It's a remarkable that's in Waterbury. Venue in Waterbury. Yes, Waterbury. Um, it, they made a major renovation and back in 2004, so it's a marvelous venue. Uh, they're going to perform for three performances uh, on February uh, 13 and 14. Okay. And by the way, 14 is a Valentine's Day. Yeah, it's Valentine's Day. Yeah, I'll give another good reason to come to see this world class performance. Bring your loved one yes. uh, to the show. And that's the best you can give an experience, right? It's an experience. So thank you so much, both of you, for coming. Tracy Ju and William Cho. Thank you so much. And you'll see more information here where you can find tickets and information for showing you. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We have the fabulous, sultry, soul singer. Lorie South.
see the stars away from here. Can't you see the glow on the window pane? I can see the sun whenever you're near. Every time you touch me, I just melt away. Now everybody's asking why I'm smiling out from my ear to ear. But I know, oh, oh, love is perfect, but I learned it after fighting through my tears. And finally you put me first. Maybe it's you. You're the one I love. You're the one I need. You're the one I see. Come on, maybe it's you. You're the one that gives you all. You're the one I always call when I need to make everything stop. Finally, you put your love on top, baby, cause you're the one that I love. You're the only one I need. You're the only one I see. Come on, baby, it's you. You're the one that gives you all. You're the one I always call when I need to make everything stop. Finally, you put the love on top.
welcome back to the show. Weren't they amazing? The sultry, soulful sounds of Miss Larie Salmon. She's here joining me on the sofa along with Mr. Jason Durant. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having us. Yay. So, first of all, how'd you get into singing and where are you going next with it? Hmm. Well, I've always been singing, okay. I think, or I like to say. Mm -hmm. um, I want to say that... Um, I started picking it up a lot more when I was living in Orlando, um, and I was actually in the military for four years, and I was uh, their little singing airman. Oh, wow. <laughs> now, now you blend your singing with your fashion. I do. Talk a little bit about that. Well, vintage is art and music is art. Yes. Yes. Um, that's where I'm going with it. I'm, you're going to see a lot more singing of myself singing um, coming up, actually. Um, and it's leading into a production that I'll be putting together in May. And it is called Vintage is Art, Music is Art. And uh, the tears will be telling you first, Harlem Nights, Motown, Woodstock 69, and Queens of the Night, which are all the fashion icons style moguls from back then. Okay. Yes. Great. So we're going to have you back, I know. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And Jason, yeah. you got an album out. Yes, I do. Yes, <laughs> Tell I us do. about it. Well, it's a smooth jazz album. Um, it's called Embracing the Moment. You can check on iTunes, type in Jason Durant. That's D-U-R-R-A-N-T, the last name, and it will pop up. Um, as well as another one coming out, um, Love Between Us. That one's coming out in Valentine's Day. So, okay. And that's Larise actually is on that one. Oh, okay. Talent, talent, talent. Well, you know. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming. My name is Lynette Cardi. Thank you so much for watching. I want to thank my guests from the first segment, William Cho and Tracy Ju. Thank you so much for coming on Shen Yun. And uh, a very special thanks to my crew, both to Miguel Vasquez and my director, Jitu Clantley. Couldn't do it without you. We'll see you on the next Lynette Cardi program. Have a